Right, good morning everyone, welcome to another lockdown uh, lesson. This time we're looking at money and exchange rates and a bit of business really. Uh, so some of the basics in that you will need a calculator for this lesson. If you've got a scientific one that would be even better, uh, kind of like the one I'm going to show on the next screen, but anything will do, you'll get by with whatever you've got. But please don't try and do everything in your head, even on the starter. So uh, to start with, can we have a look at these six questions please? And please use your calculator. I've got an example of a scientific calculator on the, uh, the board there, mainly so I can show you some of the cool buttons that you might not be aware of. So use a calculator to see if you can answer these questions here on the board. Any problems, please let me know in the chat. Good morning, George, as well. Hello. So please use your calculator for these. Don't try and do working out in your head. Yes, it's useful to be able to do that, but these are the kinds of questions you would get on a calculated paper, the kind of things that if I was doing these in real life, most of the times I would be using a calculator to work them out because it's quicker and uh, more convenient, especially because everyone's got kind of phones and calculators with them all over the place now. Okay, I'm going to help. Yeah, can you find Elsie? Morning, Gracie. Some very useful buttons here. So you can see that the that button there is very useful, the percentage button, the fraction button is absolutely brilliant as well, and that little tick box square root button as well. So some really good buttons there to save you a lot of effort on these kinds of questions. Okay, the square root is, uh, if we know that 7 squared equals 49, because 7 times 7 equals 49, to get back to 7, we would square root the 49. So, for example, if we had the square root of 64, you are looking at a number that multiplies by itself to give you 64. 
Okay, so if you know your square numbers, you know your times tables, you should be able to work out that that one equals 8. The square root of 25 would be 5. Now, the square root of 1,156 is pretty tough. Our heads can't work it out properly. But there's a button on your calculator just there. There should be a square root button, even on a regular calculator, even on this one, uh, on a regular one, it should work for that one there. So you press the tick box button, you'll get the answer. If you're using fractions as well, you've got all these little buttons here. So for the first one, let me just show you, you can use a calculator for the first one. You can type in your fraction. So we can type in using our fraction button, which is a button that looks like this on most calculators. We can type in 5 eighths. Now, of always means multiplying math. So it's 5 eighths times 652. That will get you your answer straight away. 5 eighths times 652. Right, we can use a bar and split it up, that's fine, but this is just a bit faster for just working out fractions of things when you've got a calculator. And that's what I do all the time. If I'm working out a fraction of something for something on a calculator, I will just type it straight in. I do know how to do it without a calculator, but I want to save myself time and effort. Uh, the square root button is this button there. So the square, if you're looking for the square root button, it will either look like this. I have a little white block in there to say that's the number that goes in. Or it might just look like that. You're looking for a little tick for the square root. On my Casio calculator here, it is just there. That's the square root button. Okay, let's have a look at some of these. We're not going to need all of this in the lesson. So, the first one is there. We'd write in 5 eighths times 652. Okay, so 5 eighths times 652 will give us... will give us 407 pounds 50. So 407.5, you normally put an extra zero on. 28% of 780, we can use a percentage button. So we could type in 28% times 780. We can just type it in, or you could put it as a decimal. I thought I'd to do 0.28 times by 780. Gives us... £218.40, much quicker than working out by finding 10% and 5% and 1% and so on. The square root of 1,156 is 34, when you just put that square root in. Now 0.78 is a fraction. If you put 0.788 in and press equals, this little button there, this SD one, changes it to a fraction and a decimal for you. It'll probably give you a fraction automatically. So it won't give you 78 over 100. It won't give you that. It'll cancel it down for you all the way to 18 over 25. So it cancels it down for you. 
Uh, question five, what is three eighths as a decimal? So if you put three eighths in and press equals and then press this magic button here, it will give you the answer for that as 0 0.375. And finally, question six, if you use this fraction button here and just put the plus in, it works it out for you. Without that, and we're going to do a lesson on this next week, we need to do this. Two fifths add three sevenths. We will need to make the denominators the same to 35, because that's the lowest common multiple. This one would times by seven, which is 14. This one would times by five, which is 15. Add them together, gives you 19 out of 35. Okay, that's a great skill to practice, but with a calculator, we don't need to use it. Okay, so calculator, it's almost cheating. But in GCSE now, you get two calculator exams and one non-calculator exam. So you want to start getting used to these buttons as soon as you can and being able to use it quickly and efficiently. You don't want to be messing around with this in a calculator exam when you've got a calculator. Okay? Right, and definitely not in business either. Okay, so what we're going to look at, we look at money today. We're going to look at understanding what cost, revenue and profit are. This is a word here which isn't used that much but really helps to explain things. We're going to look at working with exchange rates, if you're going on a holiday and exchanging money. And then we're going to look at solving best buy style problems. So where can you get the best bargain from? Where is the best deal? Okay? So, first thing, I have a business selling hand sanitizer, which would be a good business at the moment because of everything going around. One week, people pay me a total of £520. So I get £520 in one week given to me by people. So I'm selling these bottles and they are giving me money and they give me £520. Is this a good business? Let me know your comments. Is this a good business or not? Oh, sorry, I've done it again. This is why I should use the calculator. It's 29 out of 35. Okay, so this here, uh, is this a good business or not? If I'm getting 520 pounds in one week, is this a good business? So what you can see to start with. Really good business, okay? Yes, brilliant. Okay, so you'd be happy with £520 in one week. All right, that's good. I like that. Okay, right. So let's just look at this in a bit more detail because I haven't told you much about the business to start with. Someone said no there as well. Okay, this is actually what's going on. Okay, that week I bought 200 bottles of sanitizer. So I bought 200 bottles of this and it cost me £500. So I went to a shop and I bought 200 bottles of this for £500. I then sold all of them for £520. Okay, I sold them for £520. So, some questions you might be able to answer now. How much did I sell each bottle for? How much money did I actually make? Is this a good business? Okay, so a bit more information now. Okay, I like someone's worked it out monthly then. So, let's just have a think of your answer. Well, she said, yes, that's a good business. I'll be happy with £520 a week. That'll be very good. But uh, just have a look now. Do you think this is still a good business or not now? And why not? change that and then you can get on with the other thing. Good. Okay, so first of all, how many per bottle? So we're going to be doing at 520 divided by 200. So price per bottle. Price per bottle, 520 divided by 200. It's going to give me uh, 
£2.60 per bottle. Okay? But I haven't actually made £520, have I? Okay, I've actually only made a profit, which is a really important word, of £20. So my profit is £20. Okay? My profit is £20. So you were thinking I was making £520 a month. I'm not making £520 a month. I've only got £20 extra money to spend on things. Which for selling 200 bottles, I'm not sure whether that's a good thing or not. You can work it out as a percentage. So as my percentage profit, which is done a lot in business and in GCSE exams as well, my percentage profit will be 20 out of 500. Okay? And if you use your little button on the calculator, your magic button to do that, if you put it in as a fraction, if you did 20 out of 500 as a fraction and press the, the decimal button, you would get 0 0.04, which is 4% profit. Okay? Which might not be that good. Okay? I might want to make more percentage profit than that. So is it a good business? I, if you're only selling that many bottles, it's not a very good business. If you're selling millions of bottles, then it could be a good business. So you've got to think about it a lot more. Okay, so first of all there, a lot of you changed your minds from, bad, from good business to bad business because you're not actually making as much money now because it's profit. So some key words to help you with that. Okay, costs is the money you spend in your business. So that's everything you spend. And there could be lots of costs. It can be buying the product. Maybe you're paying someone else to work for you. Maybe you need to pay rent for a shop. There's all sorts of costs for a business. Maybe you need to pay petrol to travel somewhere. Revenue, this is a word that's not used enough. Revenue is the money you receive from selling your business products or services. So whenever anyone gives you money for something, if they're giving you money for washing their cars, if they're giving you money for selling them cakes, whatever you're doing, that money is revenue. <coughs> but the profit is your revenue take away your costs. So that's the money you've been given, that's the money you're spent, and that is your profit. So just because you're getting given loads and loads of money, you might be spending more than you're getting. If your costs are more than your revenue, then it's a very bad business because you're losing money. So don't just think about money coming in as always being a good thing. It depends how much is being spent to start with. So let's have a look at a kind of a <coughs> GCSE style question here. So an ice cream business. So I've got the costs there. I've got the revenue, so that's what you are selling. That's your price list. I want to know how much profit have you made so far if you were selling ice cream. So use your calculators, work out the total profit we've made. <coughs> if you want, you can try and work that out as a percentage profit as well, but I'm just interested in the profit to start with. Okay, so how much profit are we making from this situation here? 
So always write out your total costs, your total revenue, and then you can work out your profit from that because profit is revenue take away costs. So if you work at all your costs, all your revenue, then you can see about this business here. Okay, brilliant, we've got an answer there, we've got one answer. Okay, let's have a look at what we've got then. So the costs, all of those added together. So my total cost is eight for the ice cream cones, £40 for ice cream, £10 for flakes. So I've got, that's £58. So £58 total cost. My revenue, okay, is going to be 42 of those and 35 of with the flakes. So my revenue, my normal ice creams, I'm going to be doing 42 times £1.40. And I'm going to do 35 times 50p extra is going to be £1.90 for ice cream with flakes. So 35 times £1.90. And then I'm going to add those together. So my 42 times £1.40 is £58.80. And then my 35 times £1.90 is £66.50. If I then add those together, gives me £125.30. Okay, so I've got my costs of £58, my revenue of £125.30. You then subtract them away, take away £58. Using a calculator again, you know, let's not mess around with this gives me a total profit of £67.30. Okay, so that is my total profit for the ice cream question there. Let's see who got that. £67.30, brilliant, well done there. So we've got to just work everything out slowly. And look how organised I've been when I've been setting out. Okay, because you want to see this when it's a business question in your maths exam or just in real life. You want to be able to clearly see where you've got your money from, where you spent your money. So I've spent £58. I've made this much money. So this looks like a pretty good business. Okay, and who knows, I might have some more ice cream cones and ice cream left. So I can sell those again afterwards. So you've got to plan your business like this. Whatever you're doing, you've got to think about the cost. And also the time it takes to do it. Because if it's spending you ages to do something... You know, time is money, that saying, because you should be paying yourself or other people money for doing what, uh, for working as well. Okay, so that's a basic kind of cost, profit one, the kind of thing you get in your GCSE exams, but it's really useful maths as well. So £67.30 would have been the answer for that one there. Okay, right, so we'll come back to that kind of thing in a bit. Right, I want to look at exchange rates now. There's lots of maths involved in this. So different currencies, as in like pounds, euros, dollars, have different values based on how well the country is doing economically. So richer countries have a lot more going for them. They might produce a lot of things to sell. They might have lots of businesses going on there that are successful. So they can, their money is worth more. <coughs> okay. Another country might not be worth, the money might not be worth as much. So different monies are worth different amounts of money. They're not all the same. So it's important to know how to convert currencies if you're exchanging money. If you're going on holiday, you want to make sure you're getting the right amount of money. So I'm going to show you now an example. So this will, this will be one example without a calculator. So if you can try and do this one without a calculator, this is the only type of question you might get without one. So I exchanged £250 for 7,500 Czech Karuna. Okay, so that's the exchange rate there. Approximately £250 got me 7,500 of these Czech Corona for the Czech Republic. How much would the following amounts be worth? So I know 250 is worth 7,500. 
Can you work out what 500 will be worth, what 100 will be worth, and so on? In fact, you can use a calculator if you want. I don't mind. If you want to use a calculator, it's fine. So can we work out the different amounts of money that you would get for £250, how much check corona you would get for that? Okay? So can we convert the money? Okay, so we're doing similar things with distance, speed and time. It's the same kind of thing. You're using these tables to get to the different values of money you want. just being able to work out how much things are actually worth. When you're on holiday, when you're, when you're buying things, it's hard to, if when you're buying something in the shop and you're working a different currency, you want to be able to quickly, using this kind of thing, work out how much is this worth in pounds? Are you getting a good deal or are you getting ripped off? Like there's loads of people that kind of sell things on holidays, trying to take advantage of, of tourists that don't know how much their money's worth and they might overcharge you for things. So it's really important to be able to understand how much different money is worth in different countries. Okay, how are you doing? Yes, I've got my first Caesar one. Oh good, everything was that's really good then, well then. Have you got the pictures as well? Yeah, I'll mark my in the mid until I until I come oh, in the end. Okay, good, I like that one. Right, okay, let's go through these answers now and then we'll get on to the ones with the calculator which are much quicker. So this one here, if I'm going from 250 to 500 pounds, it's twice as much money. So I'm going to double this to get me to 1500, which we've kind of done down here as well. So 100 pounds. Well, if I know that 500 is, one, is 15,000, I can divide this by five, can't I? Because there's five of those in that. So if I divide this by five, I'm going to get... 3,000. This one, so I've already done that one, we know that's 500. Okay, uh, this one here, 2,500 I need to get. So 
from this one here, I can maybe look at 7,500 and 2,500. Well, there's three of these going to 7,500. So I can divide this by three, which isn't going to go very nicely. So if I divide that by three, Uh, right, I'll just divide it by three like this. So three into twenty-five goes eight. Three into ten goes three. So eighty-three pounds thirty-three pence. And then one pound, if I can do seven hundred and five hundred divided by two hundred and fifty. Seven five hundred divided by two fifty gives me thirty. So we get thirty for that one there. So that's your table you should have uh, on the board there. Okay, so those ones are quite easy to work with a table. However, a lot of them are not going to carry on. I've chosen quite nice numbers there. These are the actual exchange rates at the moment. I checked these last night. So we've got. 1 GBP, which is the sign for our currency, the code for it. So £1 is worth 9.00238 Chinese yen. It's worth 29.7 Corona. We got 30, so not bad for our estimation there. It's worth 1.12 euros, 1.28 dollars, 1.82 Australian dollars. So those are the exchange rates at the moment. Okay, and that was correct a couple of nights ago. So We've got the exchange rates. They change all the time in the real world. As stuff happens in a country and stuff happens in a different country. The currencies will go up and down all the time. Uh, particularly at the moment with, with this big thing is going on in the world like Corona. These are very unstable. So we're going to be using these values. And it's really easy with a calculator. Because if we know this, okay, if we know that 1 GP is equal to $1.28. Okay, I've rounded that a bit there. Okay, we can see to get from 1 to 1.28, we times by 1.28. To go the other way, we divide by 1.28. And before you start any question on this, you want to draw yourself a diagram like that. They'll always tell you what the exchange rates are. Draw your arrows in to get from 1 to 1.28, we times. To go the other way, we divide. So if you draw that in, then you know what you're doing. Okay? So I'll just show you what I mean there on a bit of a bigger one there. So that's what I've written down there. To get from pounds to dollars. Pounds to dollars, you times by 1.28. Dollars to pounds, you divide by 1.28. So can you use that? And I want you to tell me just two questions on the board. Okay, number one, how much is... £280 worth in dollars. And then the other one, how much is uh, $540 worth in pounds? Okay, so use your calculator, use that method to convert those two currency questions on the board. £280 to dollars, £540 to pounds. It's so easy if you just use the arrows, but you've got to draw the arrows on yourself. If anyone's for the, the 83.3331, the 84, if you rounded it, it's fine. Okay, you know, it's, we're talking about pence, it's not a massive deal when you're rounding those small amounts when you're just converting currencies yourself. In an exam, try and go to two decimal places. Okay, so let's just have a look at this. So what we're going to do for this one, to get from 280 to dollars, we are just going to times... By 1.28 to give us our answer. So all we're doing is 280 times 1.28, which gives us 
$358.40. To get from dollars to pounds, we are going to divide by 1.28. which is going to give us 421 pounds 88 pence. Remember to round up because it was a 575 at the end, that's 7, we round to an 8. So we just use this method, times and divide, but always write it down first. Okay, so now we go at a few of those and then look at some real life problems. So we're going to stick with dollars and uh, pounds. Can we fill in those gaps as quick as you can? So pounds to dollars. Pounds to dollars, then we're going dollars to pounds. Okay, any problems, please let me know. Well, and loads of people are getting that right. Excellent. Remember, use a diagram. Use a dime to tell you whether to multiply or to divide. If you write those hours on, just follow it. We are going from pounds to dollars, so we multiply. We are going from dollars to pounds, so we divide. It's all there for you. If you don't put this in, it's very easy to do the wrong thing and divide when you should have times, which is going to get you the complete wrong answer. Yeah, there's a few minutes on this, two minutes just to make sure you can do a few of these, they're all very similar, make sure you get the right technique, and then we'll look at some of the, the kind of tough exam questions, more real life stuff to do with actual useful business and looking for best value. Right, okay, uh, let me show you some answers for these, just to check you're on the right lines. So that's what you should have. So $5.12, $307.20, $234.38, $46.88, $2,880, $600.25, and $4.48. So you're just timesing or dividing. You've got to do the right thing. And if you draw these diagrams down, it massively helps you. Okay, so we're going to combine everything together now, looking at some Best Buy kind of stuff. Uh, so in Best Buy situations, we need to use proportion to make the amount the same so we can make a fair comparison. So you want to know how much it is for the same amount of something. So if you've got a big box of washing powder and a small box of washing powder, you need to say, well, how much do I get if I, how much would I pay for the same amount of each one. So try and get them to the same thing. So I'll explain with an example. So which of these is best value? So we're looking at the cola bottles. Got to be fizzy cola bottles for the best ones, if you ask me. Non-fizzy ones, rubbish, fizzy ones, amazing. So which is the best value? 500 grams of cola bottles for £3.50. 
three hundred grams of cola bottle for two pound twenty five, or one hundred and fifty grams of cola bottles for one pound eight. Which is the best value out of those three deals there? Deal A, deal B, deal C. And if you're posting an answer in the chat, make sure you give your reason. How do you know which one is the best value? And set out your work clearly again. So it's very hard to compare them because you've got 500 grams and 300 grams there. So you need to work out how much you get for the same amount from each one. Okay, so there's different ways of doing it. You either go up to the same or down to the same. But just make sure you really know what you're doing and label what you've worked out. So anything you've written down, label what is this the price of. I always like to set out on columns like this, so you've got your A, your B, and your C, so you can compare them that way. Okay, let's have a look. So, uh, some great areas. I've seen one where you've got the 150 up to 300, but we've got to get to the 500 as well. So I'm going to try and get them to 100 grams, I think. 100 looks like it's doable there. So to get this to 100 grams, I'm going to divide this by 5, by 2, by 5, sorry, because that's 5 100s in 500. So if I divide this by 5, I get 70p. Okay, this one to get to 100 grams, I'm going to divide by 3. This divided by 3 will give me, uh, let me use a calculator for that. 
will give me 75p. Okay, so B is definitely more expensive than A. Then if I move into C, to get this one to 100 grams, I'm going to find 50 grams first by dividing by 3. So 108 divided by 3 gives me 36 pence. So 100 grams would be 72 pence. So from this here, I can see that A is the cheapest because it's £0.70 compared with £0.75 and £0.72. Okay, so they all compare together there. Okay, right, well done. So let's try and get them to the same amount there. Some really good answers there. There are different ways of doing it. There are different ways of doing it. We need to try and go a little bit higher and uh, either higher or lower to get there. Okay, right, next we're looking at some pizzas. Okay, very tough question, very important when looking at pizzas and the value of them. So we've got a rectangular pizza there, which is 24 centimetres by 35 centimetres. We've got a round pizza there, a circular one, which has a diameter of 36 centimetres. This one costs 14 pounds, this one costs 16 pounds. Which pizza is the best value? We are going to assume they are the same thickness of these pizzas. Okay, so think carefully, how would you work out which one is the best value out of these two margarita pizzas, same toppings, same shop, same quality, different sizes and shapes, okay, which is the best value out of those two pizzas? If you haven't worked out, you need to try and work out the areas of these pizzas. Work out the areas. How much pizza do you get there? The area of that pizza and the area of that pizza. Work out the areas and then compare the areas. Okay, so you're not just getting 36 centimetres squares. You don't just eat that bit of the pizza, you eat that whole pizza. Now, if you were here last week, you should remember how to find the area of a circle. You should already know how to find the area of a rectangle, times them together. The circle, can you remember how to find the area of a circle? But you need to compare the areas to work this one out. Okay, you're definitely not just adding those together, so you don't just eat this bit and that bit. Okay. Yep. So the areas of the pizza you need to work out. So who can to find the areas? I agree, bigger in terms of pizzas is definitely better. But how do you know which one's bigger? Okay, so first of all, I would look at that and I would say that looks bigger than that. We've got big numbers there, we've got 24, that was cheaper as well. But let's find the areas. So the area of this pizza, so area equals 24 times 35. 24 times 35, again, no messing around, use a calculator. Gives me 840 centimetres squares of pizza. The round pizza, let's work it out. So we've got pi r squared radius times radius 
times 3.142. So the radius of this pizza is 18, half of the diameter. So we do 18 times 18 times 3.142. So 18 times 18 times 3.142 gives me a total area of 1,018 centimetres squared. So in fact, this pizza is actually much bigger than that pizza there, much bigger. Okay, so let's have a look at the price now. So this one is 14 pounds. So 840 centimetres squared equals 14 pounds. 1,018 centimetres squared equals 16 pounds. So I'm going to find out how much it is for one centimetre squared. So I'm going to divide this by 840. Put a tiny bit of pizza and divide this by 1,018. So 14 divided by 840 gives me 0 0.01. Seven. That's how much it costs for a little tiny piece of pizza. So one centimetre squared costs this much. If I divide this one by 1,018, I get one centimetre squared equals 0 0.016. So this one is cheaper. So this is better. So you needed to work out the area first for that question. Okay, the area first. So you're using all these different things in here. All these different things to work it out. Okay, right. Uh, okay, I think you worked really hard. We're going to do one more question. And then we might do a bit of picturing or something just if we've got a few minutes left at the end because some of you are asking for a game. So, I want to know these are prices I've got off the internet for a Nintendo Switch. Where is the Nintendo Switch the cheapest? If you can't see those, I'll write those down there. So we'll say £1 equals one twelve euros. And that also equals $1.28. So can you work out where is the cheapest place to buy a Nintendo Switch? Okay, so last question, where is the cheapest place to get the Nintendo Switch? In England, in France, or in America? So think about how we convert our money. Remember those little things you can draw. One pound equals 112 euros. So we times by 1.12. And we would divide by 1.12. Remember those really important diagrams you can draw to help you. So where is the cheapest switch? If you were selling these, if you were buying one for yourself, you want to get it as cheap as possible. There is import tax to think about, so please don't go and do this as other things, but just the basic price of it. You can work out which one is cheapest.
Okay, has anyone got an answer? I would definitely convert them all into pounds, it's probably the easiest thing to do. Okay, we've got people saying France, let's have a look then. So, France, what we're going to do, we're going to do the your 300 and divide it by our conversion, which is 1.12. For America, we would do 350 divided by our American value, 1.2. Eight and give us some answers so we can compare. Are they going to be cheaper than the UK for a Nintendo Switch? So we got £268 there approximately. And then America. We've got 270 Three dollars there, uh, sorry, pounds there. So it is in fact most expensive in the UK, then cheapest in France, and then in America. And you couldn't tell that just by looking at them without being able to do these conversions. So it's a really important skill to be able to do. We're going on holiday for traveling, which I'm sure everyone will be doing very soon, as soon as this corona thing is all uh, sorted out. But uh, being able to work with exchange rates is a really important skill for your GCSE as well. Okay, there's some quite tough GCSE questions on it uh, attached to this and another post. I'll post them here as well. Uh, next week we'll be doing uh, some fraction work, looking at adding fractions. And I've got some games planned for that as well for the GCSE lesson. So hopefully I will see you all next week. Keep up the great work. And thank you very much for working so hard. Tough lesson today, what well with your calculator work. Also remember as well, if you've missed any of the lessons or you're not we're a bit late for this one. All the lessons are available on the, uh, the main page. You can watch absolutely all of them and go back if there's anything you missed. It's all there, every single one I've done. Okay, and I will be keeping going all the way to the end of the term, hopefully. Okay, see you all later, Autumn.